Uh, afternoon, uh, traders and investors. Uh, not degenerates. I'm not going to talk crypto markets, but maybe there's some degenerates in, from the Robin Hood stoink market. Uh, watching. Yeah, welcome. Um, yeah, I just want to think higher going to opening up the economy, right? I think they may those players already may have played out. Uh, I haven't been watching stocks, right? But uh, let's just delve into it. Uh, maybe let's start with uh, oil and gas or something like that. Uh, uh, and then we can move on to different sectors like restaurants, hotels, uh, healthcare. Maybe some few picks for you guys going forward, right? Uh, picks. Are they my picks? Just, you know, ideas, right? Uh, let's just look at it pound quickly because i live in the uk currently for how much longer i don't know how much time and effort energy do you want to invest in this country that's the question uh okay bottom it bumped in it covid bottom april march look at momentum it's up up and away. We've got a W formation on the momentum. We go higher. So we start taking on these levels, 144, 145. Maybe we get up to the 160 zone, right? I think so. Uh, why is that? The, the economy is in the tank here. Uh, I already drawed that 150. Uh, okay, we we'll something like that. Little zone action. Um, okay. Eventually, I think we get into that maybe next year or so. And it's strange, right? Because what are these currencies? They're trading against the dollar, right? So the dollar must be getting hammered. Let's pull up the Dixie. Still relative. Um, but it should reflect. Not this. Oops. Dixie. Yeah, this should have kind of affect the trade and balance of the, uh, the economy it's representing, but it's the, these currencies are all kind of uh, manipulated and they're trading against each other. Uh, so I had, look, I had a call for 111 on the dollar over performance, but uh, uh, I'm going to keep it up, but it's kind of bouncing around this zone, this line. This is a key area right here. Uh, which way does it break? Does momentum give us any clues? It's negative. So not it doesn't really give you many clues. Uh, Euro, USD. And I think a lot of these currencies now have got to the point where they're being rewarded for the, the streams of their lockdown, right? Uh, the more harsh, the better the currency seems to do. Oops. I'm sure the Aussie and the Canadian are doing well. And they should really be outperformers. The Aussie and the Canadian, because if we're entering a gold bull market, could be worth uh, not holding dollars. Because uh, in crypto, you can pick and choose what, which currency you use uh, to uh, hedge into, to take profits into. You have options. You can do the Aussie, do the Hong Kong dollar, and the Canadian dollar, the pound. I don't think they got a euro one yet. So, uh, oh boy, the yeah, trading view. Gonna do some battling today. It seems uh, it doesn't like comply. Okay, that's close enough. So euro, euro USD looks good. Looks good. 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 And uh, what is the high? One six, one point six. I thought it was higher than that. I thought it almost hit two. No, am I? Am I talking crazy? Am I talking crazy? Uh, but at one point six, I think maybe during this period, uh, I think I remember American celebrities going. Yeah, let's give it a dollar and go into the euro. It's the new 
safe, strong currency. <laughs> so never listen to celebrities. I think Jay Z was definitely aping in, or you know, got got played and got promote, but got paid to promote the euro. And look at what it did. So during this period, I'm sure uh, euro printing was off the roof uh, for all these crises. Well, I think eleven was uh, some debt crisis going on, right? Dubai defaulting, etc. Um, but yeah, it looks like it wants to go higher, doesn't it? Higher, higher. So we're probably here. Probably here. And so look how I'll get sidetracked. I was wanted to talk about oil. Now I'm talking about FX. FX. And uh, the FX market is the biggest in the world, right? It's trillions of dollars a day, 5.2 trillion a day, I think, in volume. Uh, so you heard SEC uh, coming after a unnamed crypto exchange for money laundering. Well, this, most of the money laundering occurs in these FX markets, right? Uh, there's certain rules about FX. Uh, that make it ideal uh, for them to do that. Uh, I forget that there's like certain tax implications that are not applicable to FX, right? I believe you have to look it up. Um, so this is where all the action goes, right? Dollars to euros to yen, back and forth to pounds. Pound is not really a player. I'm afraid to say, but. Um, yeah, so EUUSD looks good. GBP pound. Let's bring back that. Uh, should go higher. But these moves take years to play out, right? So look, 170, 122, 114. Took three, four years. Right? So it's just, uh, it's not, it can be money makers because I think they trend well. Once they're in a the trend, let's have a look. FX. Traders do make a lot of money, uh, especially if you work for a bank. You kind of have, I'm assuming, uh, some good info, or, uh, some inside knowledge, or good sources or information, right? Uh, but look, once they gain a trend, they kind of stay in a trend, which is what you want. Uh, which is what you want. <laughs> Um, but these moves will knock out small players uh, without enough size in an account, right? If you're playing the long game and then something happens where it moves a percentage against you, you're probably getting uh, uh, your position trade will probably get knocked out if you, you don't size it correct, right? You don't need to go huge on FX to make uh, good money. Uh, okay, that's enough for that. Um, so yes, yeah, talk about the reopen, and so oil should be going up, right? You would assume. You would assume people start driving again, people start flying again, cruise ships maybe coming back online. Can we get a chart? Can we get a chart? CL. Continue. Me and trading view are gonna to have to have some words. Okay. <laughs> Remember this? Let's just do here we go. Well, minus forty. It just it's just blown up the chart forever now. Look at that. Where are we at now? Sixty three dollars. Uh, that's a good screenshot, isn't it? Really is zero <laughs> zero is up here. <laughs> Wait, the minus two eight is down here. So why did it go down here? Because this is uh, COVID, right? This is after COVID, April sixteenth. This is when this is a marker in time. P please believe that, right? John D. Rockefeller and his family got got out of the oil business in twenty sixteen. After like 100 years, do you think he knew <laughs> what was going on? 
Because I think he did. Because in 2010, I think it was part of a roadmap of like next 10 years. Like they have one for the next 10 years up to 2030. So uh, believe me, power brokers want to stay in power. And if they know the economy is changing from physical to uh, electron based, um, they want to get out of that business and pull it into something like biomedical. some sort of tech companies that they know are going to take off, maybe Zoom, etc. Um, so believe me, they are investing in something. I think they actually have a their portfolio up, right? They've got a lot of VC investments. So uh, Google, Rockefeller, uh, is it a foundation? Uh, they'll tell you what they're up to. Uh, they don't hide their stuff. They do. Even though they just don't advertise it a lot, right? So you just got to do your own research. Uh, okay, so oil. I'm gonna have to like move this from the chart. Auto. There we go. So got up to sixty eight bucks. Now we can throw on. Let's do a stochastic. No, let's not do a stochastic. Let's do a momentum structure um, for Michael Wang, who got it off Michael Oliver. Okay. Uh, is it where is it going? Oh boy. There we go. Can we do a FIP trend projection? Let's get that and that high. Uh let's, what do I want? What do I want? I want it all Yeah, okay. Let's get rid of this. Maybe that. Maybe this. And we can play around with it over here. Let's get a candle chart. Then we go back to our area chart after. 67.9 boom yep and then uh, zero okay that's good so the big trend up right and let's do a line chart so the wicks go away magically but uh, we don't need them anymore anymore So you expect to hit a hundred. Oh no, I'm done it wrong. I've done it wrong. Uh, let me redraw. Excuse my weak efforts. Oh boy. Is it let me go on a, is it gonna let me? I'm gonna have to do some finagling. Oh boy. Okay, maybe we just do a fresh draw. Sorry, this is not very exciting viewing, I know. But uh, we'll give them important price projections, right? And that's why you guys are watching. All two of you. Um, okay, it's getting closer to what I want. And yeah, there we go. That's good enough, right? Do you agree? Yeah, okay. So look, it's projecting 100 bucks. And so <laughs> as the economy reopens, they're going to push the price up against you. So uh, nice, aren't they? These guys in control. So I mean, if they really cared about you and they wanted to see you to succeed, why not um, subsidize uh, gasoline? Uh, take off the taxes for a year or so. Right? So they can do it easily. 
just a stroke or the pen. Why don't they? Why don't they? they? It's just so oil just plays an additional tax on your cost of living, your, your expenditures, and they can push it up and down a lot because they know if it costs thirty dollars to fill up your car or thirty pounds, you're going to drive more. If it costs uh, ninety, you're going to drive less, right? And if you have a, a fixed number of miles you have to drive, regardless, uh, it becomes a tax. A variable tax that they can control, right? I believe they can control it because um, they just talk to their friends in OPEC country, especially when those guys who control the OPEC have been been installed by the powers that be. Okay, oil done. So let's look at some oil stocks. You might find some gems, right? Uh, let's do refineries. So I don't know them off by heart, but Valero is one. Uh, and, uh, okay. I did find a couple. Did find a couple. So, yeah, Valero has been a great mover. Look at that. Wow. And go on the weekly. Could have picked it up 35. And this is, I think, a dividend payer. So we uh, got a bull flag action. So where do we draw it? We're down here somewhere. Or there. You can draw it there. But let's draw it there. And move. Boom. 100. 110. Valero is a buy. And will it challenge the old highs? I don't know. Maybe. That was a long time ago. Is that the old ultimate high? Yep. So look at this line chart on it. Not bad. 1988 <laughs> sub dollar. And what are the dividend payments? This is going to shock you. If it if the dividend payments are greater than a dollar per year, don't you wish you bought some back in the day? Look at that. A dollar in February 10. A dollar in November. Do you understand the power of dividend stocks that you just never sell? A dollar, a dollar, a dollar. Even during the dip, even during COVID, was the peak dividend payouts? Because if a good company, so it just goes up the dividend. Uh, why would you ever sell a solid company that pays dividends? You don't. You don't, you don't, you don't. The shares are, see? Okay. When did it cross the Rubicon where uh, you picked it up for 71 cents, right? And then... At what year did it start paying like 20 cents uh, or 71 cents a year, right? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Uh, blue, 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 10 cents. So in 2005, you're already making 40 cents on your 71 cents. Uh, and you get share splits along the way. Dividend 10, dividend 6, dividend 8. So this was during 8, 8, 12. Sorry, I have to make a part 2 on this. 15 now it's really mowing that's 60 cents a year that's gone down post gfc okay put the money into your business and okay there we go took 25 years approximately but now your one share you picked up for 71 cents is giving you like a dollar a year <laughs> and it's gone up now it's four dollars a year now 
Well, well, okay. I'm going to have to make a part two, and I'm going to try and find some oil and gas stocks for you. Okay.